Her signature voice not only set her apart from her peers in the music industry, but made her one of those artists that you could automatically identify the moment she opened her mouth. It took her a long time to get her career off the ground, but when she finally did, she was off and running. However, just as quickly as she shot to the top of the charts, she came crashing back down. Consequently, the combination of dealing with a failing career and numerous personal issues sent her to the lowest place she'd ever been in her life. American R&B soul singer, songwriter, musician, record producer, and actress, Natalie Renee McIntyre, better known by her stage name, Macy Gray, was born in Canton, Ohio. Her mother and father split up right after she was born. Even though she did see her birth father, Macy would be raised by her mother and stepfather, who she was much closer to and called dad. She was late developing and got singled out at school because of her voice. Years later, Macy would confirm that she didn't sing as a kid because she didn't even talk. Every time she would speak, she would be ridiculed. So she just stopped. Macy also took a while to decide on what she wanted to do for a living. One day, she wanted to be a firefighter, the next a writer, and the next a choreographer. Her stage name came from the name of one of her hometown neighbors. He would come over to the house and shoot pool with her stepfather. Even though Macy was extremely shy, the man would interact with her and tell her she would be something special one day. Macy attended more than one high school, including a predominantly white boarding school, after winning a scholarship. The experience wouldn't turn out to be a pleasant one, as she was subjugated to further taunting because of her race, and ultimately being asked to leave the school due to what they claimed was poor grades. Macy, though, believed it had more to do with something unfavorable she said about one of the deans. While she was there, Macy was able to explore different kinds of music, like rock and roll and pop. In Canton, Macy was raised on a steady diet of soul, R&B, and early hip-hop. Eventually, she would graduate from Canton South High School in 1985. Macy won a college scholarship to the United States Naval Academy, but turned the offer down to enroll at the University of Southern California to study film. It was also at this time that Macy finally began to embrace her voice and enjoy singing. Since she had begun taking piano lessons at the age of seven, she felt naturally connected to other musicians. At school, she would sing with a bunch of her musician friends, start forming bands, and get into songwriting. Then a friend asked her to be a singer in his jazz band, and she decided to do it just for fun. Macy would end up leaving USC in 1989, just a few credits short of a degree, and began singing in underground clubs in LA while continuing to try her hand at writing screenplays. She would spend the early 90s performing and sending out demo tapes, hoping to land a record deal. Although impressed with Macy's sound, most labels were unwilling to take a risk on an artist who didn't fit neatly into a marketable package. Finally, in 1994, Macy did receive an offer from Atlantic Records. She began recording her debut album, but was then dropped from the label upon the departure of the A&R executive who had originally signed her. Macy retreated to her parents' home in Ohio, believing that her career was over. Soon after, she married Tracy Hines, a mortgage broker. They had three children, but divorced after about two years. Also at this time, Macy decided to return to music after signing a development deal with a Los Angeles-based music publisher. They recorded a new demo tape, under a pseudonym of course, to guard against any industry bias, and began shopping her around to record labels. In 1998, she landed a deal with Epic Records. Released in the summer of 1999, Macy's debut album, On How Life Is, became a worldwide smash. The first single stalled on the charts, but the follow-up, called I Try, made the album a success and became one of the biggest singles of the year. The album would eventually go triple platinum in the US and the UK. In 2001, Macy won the Grammy Award for Best Female Pop Vocal Performance for I Try and was also nominated for Record of the Year and Song of the Year. Many years later, in 2014, when Macy sat down with Oprah Winfrey for an episode of Where Are They Now, she would speak about the kind of impact the whirlwind of fame had on her. I had a lot of money then, and I never had money before. And you have people telling you how great you are and screaming out your name. I was a massive asshole. I probably made a lot of people upset. Drugs also came into play in Macy's life. My drug use started as a result of being on tour. My crew was from England. 
All they did was smoke hash all day, and they knew where to get the good ecstasy. So you start playing with stuff, and then suddenly, it's like a crutch. Her late night partying also began taking its toll and spilling over into other aspects of her life, namely press interviews. During those moments, Macy often wore sunglasses and didn't respond to every question she was asked. Reporters attributed this behavior to her eccentric public persona, but she says there was something much different going on beneath the surface. She admitted that the sunglasses helped mask the fact that, in many cases, she had fallen asleep. Macy also revealed in the interview that her turning point, as superficial as it may sound, came down to vanity. She looked in the mirror one day and didn't like what she saw. She said the bags under her eyes and the poor quality of her skin were what really motivated her to clean up her life. In August 2001, Macy made headlines when she was booed at the Pro Football Hall of Fame exhibition game after forgetting the lyrics to the national anthem. The next month, her second album, The ID, was released. It only achieved one-sixth of her debut sales. It did, though, fare better in the UK, where it reached number one on the album's chart. Poor timing, no doubt, didn't help. The project arrived in stores just one week after the September 11th terrorist attacks, and the upbeat mood of the tracks was completely out of sync with the somber times. Just before its release, Macy did something very unusual. She donned a dress to the MTV Video Music Awards bearing the slogan, my new album drops September 18, 2001 on the front, and buy it on the back in a strategic position. A lot of people didn't care for it, but today the dress sits in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. In 2003, Macy released her third studio album, The Trouble With Being Myself. The lead single, When I See You, became a radio hit in the US and a top 40 hit in the UK although the album was not as well received by fans. The following year, in an interview with Cleveland.com, Macy pointed a finger at her record label for not promoting her last two releases as heavily as her first. A Greatest Hits collection and a live album were subsequently released in 2004 and 2005, respectively. Macy then ventured into some other business opportunities, opening the Macy Gray Music Academy in Los Angeles to help exceptional students make it big in the industry, as well as starting her own clothing line, focused on glamour wear for working women while accommodating larger and taller women such as herself as she stands at a statuesque six feet. Macy began 2007 in a less than stellar way by being kicked off stage at a concert in Barbados for using profanity, which was part of her show. She did admit that her manager had told her about the law prohibiting that type of behavior, but she didn't take him seriously. She gave a public apology that night to avoid arrest. During this period, news began to circulate that Macy was bipolar. In interviews, she would speak candidly about living with the disorder, and she also didn't shy away from acknowledging how much mental health is neglected globally and emphasized the importance of raising awareness. In March, she released her next album, Big. It's been considered a comeback album of sorts since it came after a four-year hiatus. The album was critically acclaimed and seen by some as her best work. Unfortunately, it was only moderately successful in the US. By the next year, Macy decided it was time to debut her alter ego called Nemesis Jackson. She released a single under the name, but the effort didn't take and quietly faded away. Macy's fifth album, The Sellout, dropped in June 2010. Even though both singles released from the album became top 10 hits on the US Billboard Hot Dance Club Songs chart, it received generally mixed reviews from most critics. Also that year, Macy did an interview with The Guardian and touched on the prejudice she's faced in the music industry. If you're black and you don't do R&B or hip hop, then you're going to have a very long haul. There's only one Lenny Kravitz, one Tracy Chapman. The last label I was on only sent my records out to urban radio stations, even though I was more of a pop artist. Two years later, Macy would release two albums within the span of seven months. Covered, in March, as the title suggests, is an album featuring covers of previously released tracks by well-known rock, pop, rap, and indie artists. Then, in October, for the 40th anniversary of the 1972 Stevie Wonder album, Talking Book, Macy covered the entire record 
and released her version as a tribute. Macy's next project, The Way, was released in October 2014. It coincided nicely with the airing of her Oprah Where Are They Now episode that followed a couple of weeks later. Even though Macy's continued to release her work on a fairly consistent basis over a long period of time, she wasn't able to keep up the momentum of her early success. She touched on why in the interview, saying, I had all that success really early, and I don't think I had a plan to make it last. I just kind of took it for granted and assumed that it would be like that for the rest of my life. I pissed a lot of people off, and I think I stopped working as hard as I used to. 2016's Stripped and 2018's Ruby mark Macy's ninth and 10th studio album efforts, respectively. Over the years, Macy has also enjoyed dabbling in the acting world. She's had small roles on several TV shows, as well as movies, including Training Day, Shadow Boxer, and The Paperboy. She was also a contestant on the ninth season of Dancing with the Stars in 2009. 2021 was a year filled with a lot of great accomplishments and a return to the music scene for Macy. She spent the better part of it gearing up to release her first project as an independent artist. She's not going on the journey alone though. She'll be accompanied by three other artists, a bassist, a drummer, and a keyboardist in a collective called Macy Gray and the California Jet Club. So far, the band's released several singles, plan to drop their album titled The Reset very soon, and already have a 2022 UK and European summer tour scheduled to begin in May. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and comment. Also, don't forget to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you won't miss any future videos. See you next time.